Hello, this is Caleb with App Design Tips, and I want to show you 10 quick Figma tips. Before we get started, if you want to download this exercise file, you can find this in the description below. So first thing, I'm going to zoom in here and show the smart guides. Now, using smart guides, you can hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows, and if you select any layer and hold this down, you can see the size relationship towards any other area around this object. So for example, this square, we have 15 pixels here to the left, and then we see 343 pixels here. And we can do the same thing with text, so just select that. We can see 15, 15, 15, and 20 pixels between this text and this text. So it's a very quick way to see what your spacing looks like between different layers. And moving on now to the second artboard, we have editing rounded corners. And here we have a square and we can go over here to the radius and we can turn this radius to 10 pixels very easily but we also have these nodes here so if I drag this up and down we can change the radius very easily or if I hold down command I can change just one of these radiuses individually and you see what happens here over to the right this actually created four fields now I'm going to undo this just to show you the difference so undo a few times so we can see that this is 10 pixels if we want that independent control, we can click on this corners independent. And this goes from the top left, the top right, the bottom right, and the bottom left. So it just goes in a clockwise direction. So now I'm going to hit 40 pixels, 10 pixels, 5 pixels, and 60 pixels. We can see that each one of these is independent. And now we can do this with squares, but we can also do this with custom shapes. So I have the star here. If I double click inside, you can see these nodes. I can click on any one of these or I can even hold down shift and click another one and I can just change the radius of just these two corners. So we see if I click away now, this has a rounded corner, this has a rounded corner and the rest are sharp. So very easily I can individually choose what the radiuses look like for each one of these. And same thing with these nodes inside, I can choose to have a 5 pixel radius inside here and make that a little bit curved. Now using direct select. We can see here that we have a grouped layer here that's called shapes and if we select this we can move this around and it'll move all of the objects at once because they're grouped. But what happens if we want to change this star here? Well we can double click inside of here and drill down in these layers or we can hold down command and you can see the difference when I hold down command it's selecting any of the shapes and this is actually a group within a group so if I double click I only am clicking on this group now and I have to double click again to drill in but it's very fast if I want to change this text. Just hold down command, click, and I can change the font size here, move this around, and I can even hold down command shift to select multiple direct layers inside of a group. So just a very quick way to select different objects whether they're grouped or not. Now on to spacing and alignment. If you select multiple objects here, you can see that we have access to some alignment tools here. So we can align to horizontal centers here, and we can even distribute vertical spacing. So if we test this now, holding down Option, we can see that there's 16 pixels in between each of these elements. And the same thing here, if we want to set some vertical centers and align things with horizontal spacing, we can do that very easily here. So this is the horizontal alignment, the vertical alignment, and there are some distribution buttons that you can use here. Now moving on to exporting layers and groups. And this one's really cool. We have three symbols here, so I'm going to click on one of these. And if we scroll down here, we can see export. So I can click plus here, and I can choose to export this in whatever format I want, in PNG, JPEG, or SVG. And I can even choose multiple sizes. So if I click on this plus icon, you can see that that's going to scale at two times the resolution. And it'll even put at 2x on the end of my file name and it'll be PNG, I can add again, and this will be three times the resolution. And I can even export one that's just a regular SVG. So if I export this, it's gonna export four different formats or four different sizes. So let's try that here. I'm going to click Export Icon Crying, and let's just go ahead and save these here. And we can open up our Finder window, and now if we see this Icon Crying PNG, we can see that that's 1x, but if I tab over to the right here, we can see 2x, 3x, and so just different resolutions here. And then we have the SVG icon here that we can open up in Illustrator. Now let's look at duplicating layers. I have two layers here, 
And the first thing that we can do is we can hold down Option and just drag any layer. And we can see that that's being duplicated. So we can do that as many times as we want here. And just drag again and it'll duplicate. And another nice thing is here we can click on a layer and just type Command D or Windows D on a Windows. And that will duplicate this as well. So either way works. And in fact, because I dragged this over here and had an 8 pixel space sync, now the next time I click Command D, you can see that it's going to give me 8 pixels spacing again. So I can just hit that multiple times for a quick repeat grid style effect. And same thing here, I can hold down Option and just drag this at 8 pixels and then hold down Command D and it'll copy this with 8 pixels spacing in between. Now let's talk about send to front and back. So we have four layers here and if we click on any one of them, we can see that these layers, we can drag them up here to be on top or down to be on the bottom. And we can see that take effect here. Or if we want some fast commands, we can click on this guy for example and hold down Command or Windows on a PC and just hit the right bracket a few times to move this up in the layers or the left bracket to move it back. But if we know that we want it to be all the way to the back, we can hold down Option, Command, left bracket, and it'll move it all the way back in this artboard. Or Option, Command, right bracket to bring it all the way to the front. Now we're going to talk about adding math in fields. And I have a few objects here that we can use to give an example of this. So the subtract icon here, we know that we want this to be double the size to match this. So rather than typing 180 here, we can just hit this multiply key and just hit 2 and that will multiply this by 2 and make it the right size. Or this one for example is 20, it's supposed to be 180 so we can just add 160 to this. So plus 160 and that will resize. And we're going to do the same thing with this one except we're going to divide this by 2 and now we have everything is the same size but that doesn't only work in sizes. You can see here that this layer has a 50% opacity we can obviously type 100% opacity or we can do times 2 and that will multiply that by 2. So it works in any field in this design panel. This will even work with radiuses. So if I have this subtract button for example, I can click in here and type 5 times 3 and we know that's going to be 15 pixel radius here. So math inside fields works like magic. Now we're going to go to custom shapes and we're going to talk about how we can create custom shapes here. So if you go into your shapes toolbar we can see that we can create polygons and stars and if we click on this polygon tool for example and we create another one just like this it's going to create a triangle for us but we don't have to stop there there's some special nodes here for the radius so we can change the radius of this custom shape and we can also change the count so if we want this to be a square a pentagon a hexagon we can change this to as many points as we want here and same thing with the star. So if we click on the star tool, we can size that up. And we have one more node that can control something. So we have the radius here. We have the count. So we can increase the count as many times as we want here. And then we also have the ratio. So how wide do we want these inner corners here? So very easily with these tools, you can create some custom shapes here for your designs. The last tip we're going to talk about is grabbing CSS styles from your designs. And this comes in really handy for programmers that want to grab some of these color values and the sizes as they're programming your designs. So if you give them access to your Figma designs, all they have to do is click on any of these elements. And you see right here, they can jump into the code section and they automatically get some CSS values. And you can copy these values and you can go into your text editor and just paste these values directly in here and you have the position you have the sizes and it shows you the background color the border size and color and even this inset box shadow that I have inside of here and same thing with this circle we have a circle with a gradient inside of it so we have all of the CSS values here we can just highlight and copy this and we can go over here and just paste this directly in our text editor and get those values very quickly. Now if you're developing in another program, you can click down here and you can get the same type of code for iOS or Android. And you can do the same thing, copy this and paste this in your text editor. So those are the 10 quick tips for Figma and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of future videos.